For the last three years, Chef Ramsay has whipped aspiring chefs into shape on Hell's Kitchen. This is painful! Get out! Out! Now, Gordon Ramsay, the most successful restaurateur on the planet, with critically acclaimed restaurants in London, Dubai, Tokyo, and New York, is crisscrossing America for the most difficult assignment of his career. This is disgusting! I am gobsmacked. Turning around America's kitchen nightmares. Please help me! Each week, he will go to restaurants on the brink of disaster. There is no more money. He's not doing his job. This place is a disaster zone. I put so much into it. But to get these restaurants back on track, Chef Ramsay will hold nothing back. I've never, ever, ever, ever met someone I believe in as little as you. It will be intense. Show all, you dirty pig. What do we need, a death in the restaurant before some fucker gets a grip? I thought your food was crap. I'd rather have this conversation Thank downstairs. You mother... It will be emotional. You're a fucking blowjob! That's it! Seriously, I'm pissed off. It's not my fault. Why did you keep eating if it was that bad? Just go! Just go! And it will be shocking. Fire them on a spot. Oh, my God. Look at them. It's fucking rancid. It's rotten. I've eaten it. I feel like spitting on both of them. I think this place will run better without you. Can you go and tell them that the kitchen is closed? We're shut. It's the luckiest day of their lives. We're shut for the We're night. We're shut for the night. We will make this a success. Put your hand up and swear to God. In the end, you will see dramatic turnarounds. Aren't they horrible? <laughs> of not just the restaurants. Oh, oh, it's fantastic. But the people who work in them. I'll never forget you, man. The best of my life, bro. You're the best, man. And while most appreciate his help. God bless you. You are a wonderful person. Others aren't so grateful. My no, fucking kitchen. Jeff, I know you can hear me. Don't run. Why is this guy here? Who the fuck are you to turn around and tell me when you were like a pig? You okay. French pig. Goodbye, chef. Good luck, loser. Get ready as Chef Ramsay turns America's kitchen nightmares. Thank God for what we're about to receive. May the Lord not kill me with food poisoning. Back into dreams. Please do not screw it up. Tonight, Gordon faces an overwhelming challenge. It's time to walk away. There is nothing else to do. The mixing bowl's business is dwindling, and relationships are crumbling. You can't get so overwhelmed. I wasn't told. Why do you keep story? saying that? I'm pissed off. The manager is desperate. I've tried everything. The owner has lost his passion. You look like a man that's dying to be put out of his misery. And his wife wants him to shut the place down. I can't sacrifice myself for the mixing bowl anymore. Now, Gordon must turn the mixing bowl upside down. You're fighting for my life? It's the last chance for this dying restaurant. Do not talk oh, to me God. like that. That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. <laughs> Belmore, New York, a busy commuter town about 30 minutes from New York City and home to a wide variety of restaurants. For 10 years, the mixing bowl has managed to survive, but now, with increased competition, it's only months away from closing. He said Cajun, not Asian. My name is Billy Galetti. I'm the chef owner of the mixing bowl. Pick it up! I'm the chef, delivery guy, Mr. Fix-It, doing bills, picking up supplies. I mop the floors if I have to. It's what I have to do to keep the place alive. The mixing bowl eatery has been here for 10 years. Lisa! Is this order right? You know what? You should talk to your manager, not your wife. If it was up to Billy's wife, the restaurant would be closed next week. It says two muscles. You should say one. My hope is really gone for this place. How bad is it yesterday? Disaster. Six people came in the restaurant all night last night. Everyone just knows he's mixing ball Mike. Right this way, young ladies. Yes, he's the manager, but it's impossible to work with him. You get five times more pay than the servers. What the hell is your problem? Kind of like one big happy family. What you just said makes absolutely no sense. That doesn't make sense. Shut up. Ay, ay, ay. Mike, what are you doing? Taking a drink is I'm parched. He is the manager. Oh, my god. What does Mike do now? Uh. 
I see him schmooze a lot. <laughs> People come in here and they think I'm the owner. They call me like the mayor of Belmore. Do they do that because they respect me? They fear me? I don't know. Shut up and let don't me finish tell me talking. To shut up. You're not we respect me. Nobody's gonna listen to someone who's yelling at them like a madman. Talking to you is like talking to no. a brick wall. All right, all right, all right. When the mixing bowl first opened, it was busy every week, you know, it was really doing well. Oh, fucking the people, man. Now it's just slow. Everybody's like depressed. We tried everything that we can. There is no more money. There, there's no, there is nothing else to do. If something doesn't change and someone doesn't help us out, the restaurant could be closed next week. Now it's at the end of the road. I'm so stubborn about keeping it alive, but am I hurting myself? Am I hurting my family? You're holding everything up now with all this crap. I'm sorry, that's what I wrote. Our marriage gets affected by his business. Go, go out, go out. We're struggling seven days a week. That puts a damper on our relationship. I can't sacrifice myself and our children for the mixing bowl anymore. If it's not gonna work, it's time to walk away. Gordon Ramsay has just one week to uncover the restaurant's problems, devise a plan, and find a way for this restaurant to stand out in this competitive market. I'm nervous, because this looks dreadful. Oh my god. Oi. It's a pleasure to have you here. Not at all. Sorry, Gordon. My first name? Mike Lannisburg. Mike, nice to see you. It's exciting, just like, oh my god, like I'm meeting Gordon Ramsay. You know, to me, he's a god in the restaurant industry. Good to see you. Hi. Hi. Lisa. Lisa, nice to see you. God. Well, this is quiet. This yes. is, this this is, this is, this is, this is typical. All these staff, one, two, three, four. How many's booked for lunch? Nobody. No. no? When Gordon first came in, I was nervous. And I hope he's just not too hard on all of us. I'm going to sit here? Yes. This is the lunch menu. And what style of restaurant is it? It's new American type cuisine, salads, some wraps, a little bit of pasta. Sounds like a health spa. Um, where? When was the last time you went to a spa? The gym. <laughs> what that? What, are you saying? Are you trying to say something? I'm asking, when was the last time you went to the gym? Oh, yeah, not for a long time. When was the last time we had a salad? <laughs> not for a long time. Right. OK. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. OK, great. When you look at the way the restaurant is put together, you can identify instantly from the paper cloths to the drapes to the plants to the ceiling to the colour that this restaurant really is on its last legs. There's not long to go here. Mm. Award-winning Maryland lump crab cakes, seared North Atlantic salmon, sun-dried tomato basil. For such a small restaurant, the menus are huge. You need a couple more minutes? Or? I'm dying to taste the award-winning Maryland Crab cakes. They are excellent. An award winning? What award did they win? You could ask Billy, he knows more about it. I thought you'd know about it if you're the manager and it's on the all menu. Well, I. I anyway. I, <laughs> I'll have a, a zucchini pancake. Okay. And I'll go for the seared North Atlantic salmon, I think. Okay. Thank you. God, that guy needs some spark. Beanbag. He is intimidating to serve. Okay, these are the Maryland crab cakes. Thank you. And the zucchini pancakes with chive you. sour cream. Lovely, thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. May I ask what you think of the crab cakes? Yeah. May I ask you not to stare at me? Absolutely. It makes me feel really uncomfortable. No problem. You know, I've got this cockroach on your back, you're trying to shake off, and I like to just sit and enjoy my lunch. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Mm. Award winning, maybe not. In terms of freshness, yeah. I wouldn't expect to find something so fresh in such a dreary, dreadful dining room. Zucchini pancakes. Stodgy, bland, and just pretty thick. It's like having a mouthful of glue. Oh, oh my god, what's that on top? Tomato base of balsamic Sun sauce. Mm hmm you smell garlic. Where's the garlic from? Is that on the green beans? The shallots. There no garlic? No garlic no? in any of the ingredients. And then on the beans? Looks like there's garlic on there. <laughs> Why don't you just check with him? I can smell it anyway. I will. That looks like garlic. I mean. Thank you. Billy? What? The string beans. You cook them in garlic? Yeah. Is there any shallots in there at all? No shallots. Some of them are very bland. And the sauce just heavy, soggy, and vinegary. 
garlic everywhere. No one wants to come out to lunch and stink of garlic. That's for sure. You know, Billy's getting a little nervous. He's like, am I about to get reamed right now? You know. I don't know what to expect, to be honest. When you first walk in that dining room, you get this depressing manager jumping on you, which is a great shame. I'm sure five years ago, you had some form of spark. The food, the crab cakes were good. Thanks. Yes. That was the high point. Everything else, unfortunately for me, just bland. Look, pancakes were soggy and fish was dry. The salmon just, it just looked old fashioned. Can I ask you an honest question? Yes. It was our 10 year anniversary and we say for our 10 year anniversary, everybody gets complimentary of Kenny Pancakes. Yes. Now everybody tells me they love them. If you give something away and it's free, who's going to complain about it? That never happens. So either he's crazy, or every customer that comes in here is lying to me. I want to come back with a plan and bang. It didn't blow me away today. I'm not that excited about it. It's very average, very dreary, and it's very sad. End of story. OK? See you later, yes? It makes me feel terrible when Gordon says he doesn't like my husband's food. You know, of course I'm going to take offense to that. Gordon is wrong about the restaurant. My position is the manager, so I am not intimidated by anybody. Bring it on. Coming up, Gordon sees a sign of the times. Now accepting dinner reservations. We thought maybe because we're not taking reservations, so it's fucking empty. Lisa and Billy must face the truth. Maybe we should close this place down. And later, Hi. as Hi. Gordon turns up the heat, Can you wake up? manager Mike loses it. I was it. told 7 o'clock this morning. That's it! Seriously, I'm pissed off. Do not talk oh, to no. me like that. Hey, fuck off outside now. He's a freaking lunatic. Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. Later that night, after meeting the staff and sampling the food, Gordon wants to observe a dinner service so he can evaluate Billy in the kitchen and Mike in the front of the house. How many have we got booked tonight? Two or three people. Bloody hell. Jesus. This is not very good right now. It is 7 o'clock, and there's a lot of open tables in the restaurant. To me, I would have shut the doors a year ago. Wherever yeah. you feel like it, it's your choice. Why not? It's an hour into the dinner service, and it's starting to become clear to Gordon why the mixing bowl is losing so much money. This coupon, you could use it this evening. 50% off. Your check okay. is all adjusted. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. What's going on here? I'm taking 50% off my check. We hand somebody a check. You put this 50% off coupon in it. 15. 50, no, no, 5 -oh, 50. In here? Yeah, 50% off. Holy smoke. So we're giving more money away before we get money in the till. My goodness me. Jesus. Mike just told me about a coupon that he tried. How long have you been doing it? Um, long time. Eight years. Eight years? Christ. That doesn't make sense, that, does it? No, it doesn't. Do you ever go out there? Um, yeah. When I, you know, it dies down, I'll walk around. While Billy spends the entire dinner service in the kitchen, the responsibility of running the restaurant is in Mike's hands. Any more coupons anywhere else? No, no, that's you it. sure? Nothing at all. There is more. I have about 10 signs that I had made up. Go and get them. Someone grab the door for me, please. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. All of them go in the window at some point. Where did you get all these from? I have a place. They make them up for me. It was expensive. Holy mackerel. As you can see, I tried everything. Clearly. Now accepting reservations. We thought maybe because we're not taking reservations, maybe people aren't coming in here. It's empty. Yes. But we, it's we did fucking empty. Tuesday night, dinner special, select three. Three what? That was, that was one of the worst things we've ever done. Um, 
So we did uh, select three. It was, it was a while ago. We did... Um... And that's a pumpkin. But can, can, I, can I tell you what? Because... I mean, okay. listen, read okay. this. Okay. Order your Thanksgiving desserts early yes. in case we're closed by the time we come round to November. What I do is I, I'll put up a sign a month ahead of time because maybe people will drive by and say, oh, look. Which sign was the most successful? None. <laughs> None. Is there anything else that I should know? That's it. That is it. Well, there's, well, well. Oh no. It, there, was, there was. Oh no. It, it's not really that big of a deal. Gordon, can you come here? It's a little big. What in the fuck? Free appetizer with dinner. Oh, fucking hell, man, man, get me out of here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Where in the? Okay, it's, it, it went over. It went over the. You saw these other little signs weren't working. And how long did the sign go for? Well, it would have still been up, but there was a, a a bad windstorm a few months ago, and it ripped it down. It blew the signs down. Yes. Thank fuck for that. Doesn't this catch your eye though from the street? Catch my eye. Isn't that the point? It's fucking worse than the dollar shop. You're incredible. Okay, get the signs and put them back around here. I don't want any customers to see it. I've got a Russian tour who's just a cook, a simple cook, a manager totally obsessed by his signs, and a wife that would rather close the place down tonight. This is a real nightmare. My God. After a day of observation, Gordon is ready to confront Billy and Lisa with the harsh reality. I've got to be fucking brutally honest with you. You know that. I've seen a lot today. Watch the service. Unfortunately, I spent a lot of time talking to Mike, and uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's out there, that one, huh? You seriously have to start thinking as a businessman, not leaving it to someone like Michael to sort of focus on the baloney and bullshit, and then watching you cooking. I've never, ever seen a chef so quiet in all my life. You look like a man that's dying to be put out of his misery. Lisa, you may be right. To put you out of your misery, Maybe we should close this place down. Fucking tonight. Up next, there is mutiny at the mixing bowl. I think he's lazy. The rest of us bust our butts to get your tables and our tables done, and then you take a half like of our tips. Do you think you would have those tips if I wasn't here? And later, before Billy steps up. I was told 7 o'clock this morning. That's it! Seriously, I'm pissed off. I don't want him to talk to my wife that way. Do not talk oh, to me like that. that. Gordon steps in. Hey, you fuck off outside now. Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. After the dinner service, Gordon decides to test Billy and Lisa's commitment to the restaurant. Lisa, you may be right. To put you out of your misery, maybe we should close this place down. Fucking tonight. The stress and the pressure relieved. Bang, you'll be gone within 12 hours. So what do you think? I don't want him to give up his dream, but I don't see why we keep going with it. Billy's a good person. He doesn't want to just walk away. But if he has to close the doors, it needs to be closed then, and let's move on already. I want to live a normal life. And this is where you really seriously dig deep. If the restaurant dies, it'll be like a death in the family. We have to go forward. I'm gonna turn this around. Seriously? Yeah. If you seriously, seriously want to continue, you have got to find your passion with your support. And truthfully, unless you change, you'll be gone in six weeks' time. It's day two, and time for Gordon to start implementing his plan. He hopes to get through to manager Mike about his destructive promotions with the help of a somewhat destructive measure. Looks like a wood chipper to me. That's right. It's time to say goodbye to the past. It's time to say goodbye to Valentine's Day. Mad, yeah, I am fucking mad. Working with guys like you makes me fucking mad. 
With Gordon struggling to get through to Mike, he now turns his attention to the mixing bowl's greatest challenge. Let's have a look at 1997 first. One, two, three, four restaurants. Wow. Yeah. 10 years ago. Let me show you something. 2007. Holy shit. Look how built up this neighborhood's become over the last 10 years. Ooh. 41 restaurants, from a Chinese to a deli to a pizza to a diner. Right now, we need to reposition the mixing bowl smack bang in the middle of all that competition. Gordon's right, 41 restaurants. Of course, you're gonna kind of get lost in the shuffle. What else is around this area? You go to it every day. Oh, the gym. Gyms, beauty parlors, tanning salon. Right. What isn't on there? A healthier? Healthy is something that's not even listed anywhere near here. One way we can help turn this around is by installing something to do with health. It's exciting to realize you can do things healthy and just open my eyes to a whole new world. Give the fucking neighborhood what they want. With the mixing bowl now embracing being the healthy, high-quality restaurant of Belmore, Gordon also realizes he needs to ignite Billy's passion. Time to be competitive, creative, yeah? Our list of 15 ingredients, okay? Half an hour. You work there, I work there. Keep it fresh and healthy. Think about the direction of the restaurant, the way it's going, yes? Okay? Gordon Ramsay teaching Billy. He's being trained by one of the top chefs in the world. I was totally into what I was doing, but then like you realize that's Gordon Ramsay working next to you here. It was great. So you shredded the fennel, same way I've shredded it. I hope you're not copying me, Billy, man. I'm not copying you. I did the fennel first. I think you're copying me. Oh, dear. <laughs> I was so excited, because I haven't seen Billy this fired up about something in so long. You're very quiet there, my man. Fucking hell, what is it with you? You must drive Lisa around the bend, you know that? How did you communicate through email? I wasn't paying attention to what he was doing at all. I was more involved in just making my dish. Let's go, my man. Up, 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 away. Will you finish first? OK, good. So, yours is a? Seared salmon with ginger balsamic uh, drizzle. This is um, poached salmon, uh, just poached in the vegetable stock, topped with a um, walnut pesto. Everything looked really nice, just fresh and lively and vibrant, and the food kind of like jumped out of you. Looked great. This is the kind of food that the mixing bowl should be serving. I like that. Both dishes are good enough to go on the menu tonight. I like the food, but I really don't know if Gordon can change this place around. With word that world-class chef Ramsay is in town, the mixing bowl is busier than normal for tonight's dinner service. You have reservations this evening? But can the staff at the mixing bowl actually cope with a busy restaurant? Yes. Push the salmon, please, yeah? Okay. okay. Push the salmon special, Thank yeah? You. I think that the customers are absolutely going to love the new salmon dish. Push the salmon. Head the floor, that don't point. Don't point at customers. We're running a restaurant, not a fucking zoo. Did you get the salmon special? Yeah. Okay, good. Let's take 12 out. Let's take 12 out. Do you like yes. salmon? Yeah, I would try salmon. Three salmon specials. Good. We're selling the salmon. Good. Hey, Bon. Hey, Ben Smith. I don't particularly care about the kitchen. Your main focus should be the customers. The water is complimentary. Oh, yeah. Is he working now? All he does is stand and talk and lean and pray. <laughs> Summer special is really going well, but Michael, what the fuck is he doing? This guy is just fucking using this restaurant to feed his ego. But I'm glad you guys are enjoying everything. You want your friends to come in? That's great, but you should be out working. Okay. Ask for the call, please. It's impossible to work with him, and every time you work with him, he takes half of your tips. Kimmy, you gotta work the tips, baby. I get very large tips. Give him some more water on table 18, please. I mean. 20, 25 percent. Could you do? You have to put on another round of drinks, another bud, another bud, and another diet coke. Also, I am tired of Mike taking half the money from the tip cup. That's not fair. Goodbye. Thank, Goodbye. You. Thank you. Despite the success of the new specials, the staff is unhappy with their tips, and all fingers are pointing toward Mike. 
you find a table, you latch on, and then the rest of us bust our butts to get your tables and our tables done, and then you take a half like of our tips. Can I, can I, can I say something? Do you think you would have those tips if I wasn't here? When people come in here, everybody knows me. The customers know me, and all you guys know that. People know me the best because I make it a point of making friends with the customers, and that's what customers want. They want to feel special. Mike thinks this is his restaurant. He is an employee here. Fucking unbelievable. Okay, time to get real. When I ask you to wake up in terms of running the fucking business, sometimes you run it as if you own the place. And the reason why you do that is because, Billy, you are too weak. And, Lise, if it sounds crap, open up and say it. I'm what? nervous that everybody's sitting here with their thumbs up their asses and not doing what they're supposed to be doing. I don't think right now that's the right attitude. I think we should have a positive attitude. I mean, be realistic. When I'm busting my own tables and everybody else is running around crazy... We are aware of what the problems were. And I think that we should move forward and put the damn past behind us. You're kind of talking to yourself right now. I'm talking. I, this is how I feel. I am verbalizing These are things how I you feel. need to do. I, I, I'm fighting for my life here. You right now need to step up to the plate and make the changes every freaking day, every minute of the day. That's it. Billy, that's the first time you sounded like a boss because it's your fucking life on the line. Don't ever forget that. <laughs> hey, he's laughing again. If you're carrying the weight that this guy and his wife has on their shoulders, you wouldn't fucking smirk. Tomorrow, the most important day in 10 years. We're gonna implement changes to help get this business turned around if this doesn't work after tomorrow. The blame is on your shoulders, Mike. <laughs> Still to come. Let's go, big boy. The mixing bowl is busier than ever. Pick up this plate. Let's go. Can I get the three soup? I, I order it now. Yeah, it's coming now, you fucking hell. I was just fed up. But nobody is in the mood for celebrating. I was told 7 o'clock this morning. That's it! It's the dinner service you have to see to believe. Seriously, I'm pissed off. Do not talk to me like that. It's done. Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. Day three. Gordon's design team works overnight and transforms the mixing bowl from a nondescript diner into a contemporary, sleek restaurant. And now it's time to be revealed. Right, ready? Yep. Yes, Mike, ready? I'm so excited to see, like, what you know. <laughs> I'm psyched. The place needs a facelift, so I'm very excited to see it. Let's go. Lovely. Here we go. Oh, wow. It's gorgeous. Oh my god, I oh <laughs> Jesus. Yes. <laughs> no kissing. Huh? <laughs> Looks nice. Huh? Beautiful. <gasps> this is gorgeous. I feel like I want to spend money in here. It's exciting to walk out to the dining room and just seeing what it looks like. The decor was terrible. Now I think the decor works. It fits with the food, it fits with the name. Lisa, what do you think of the chairs? Oh my god, yeah. I Sit down. love them. Have a seat, love. Will. It's beautiful. Warm. Oh my god. It's amazing. It just was like a gift. It was just like a period of grace. It really touched me deeply. It looks like a restaurant now, doesn't it? Yes. Are you serious going to start spending time in your own restaurant now? Yes. Saying hello to customers? Yep. Kim. How do you feel, darling? It looks completely different. I feel so much better about coming here, knowing that they're not looking around thinking, why am I sitting here with this gross paper on my table? <laughs> it's gorgeous. I can't wait for customers to come. <laughs> Sorry. I can't wait for customers to come in and see the place. Jesus. Lisa, have you got any tissues? <laughs> huh? Hey. This is our new start, so hopefully, it's what we needed. It's unbelievable. With the new decor as the inspiration, it's time for Gordon to overhaul the menu. OK, first salad. Apple and Andy, um salad, yes? And it's done with walnuts and honey Dijon dressing. It's very fresh, fragrant, very citrusy, very tangy. Gordon woke me up. He got me back to what's now and just trying to put that together. 
Under Gordon's direction, the mixing bowl has removed heavily sauced entrees and replaced them with healthy, vibrant items. Roasting fine tomato soup, slow roasted in the oven, overnight, blended, and it's finished with fresh basil and drizzled olive oil. Tuna niçoise, it's been uh, dressed with an olive tapenade. Green beans, olives, eggs, and roasted new potatoes there. We got to see the way all the new dishes looked. They looked beautiful. Smaller portions, lighter foods, all of it made sense. Good. Right, are we ready? Yeah? yeah? Yes. Good luck. I love the menu because I was eating all the food in here, so now I'm eating a little bit healthier. It may, uh, may have an impact on my uh, belly. With a healthy new menu and the restaurant redesigned, it's time to utilize the staff's new energy and spread the word about the new mixing bowl. We'll go out to a spa, a gym. We'll just put the word out. Fresh outlook, fresh appeal. My God, look at these. Hi, guys. You all know what the mixing bowl is, right? That's the restaurant there, the mixing bowl. We're going to be kicking off our new, light, vibrant, healthy menu, exciting new food. It'd be great to see. At the Mixing Bowl Eatery in Belmore. New decor, new menu, new style. Yes. Gordon. Gordon, I'm burning 1,700 calories per hour. <laughs> if Philly could see you right now. Not bad for a fat guy, huh? <laughs> I brought you here for a wake-up call, yeah? Let's go. Holy. In keeping with the healthy direction of the restaurant, Gordon has reached out to the New York Dragons Arena football team to create some buzz in the community. Big day for us tomorrow, so uh, we want to help celebrate that and uh, maybe get you down to the restaurant and uh, come and have a bite to eat. I think it's an amazing idea. I just hope it works. Day four. Only a short time before relaunch and Mike is already feeling the heat. There's a couple of little tiny things that bother me because I, I, want, I want the place to look perfect. Mixing while Mike's speaking, can I help you? How many people are you going to be? There was a lot of confusion with the reservations, and there was a lot of things that I really had to do myself. Disgusting. Okay. He's having a hard time today, which we all were, you know, but he really lost it. Actually takes all right. some all right. See, thought. This is why we need Xanax. Mike just seemed so stressed, and I was definitely concerned that it wasn't going to help us when we opened the doors. That's it. That's it. With the relaunch only minutes away, everything seems to be in place for the big night. It looks like we have 47. And the restaurant is fully booked. Okay. Good luck. Yes? Let's go, big boy. Customs are queuing up to get here. Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, there were too many reservations set at the same time. Oh, no. Even I'm getting a little bit fucking doolally. There'll be a van picking me up in a minute with a fucking straight jacket. I was not. I was not. <laughs> fucking madness. It's the mixing bowl's biggest night. And because of Mike's reservations mix up, Many of the customers have arrived at the same time. How you doing? How's everything? As soon as those doors opened and the floodgates opened up and everyone kind of came at once, it was a little bit stressful. Just give me two seconds. Mike. Yes. Right, come over. Coming. OK. Reservations. What was the hiccup? I handed over the reservation list to Kim, and then I'm not exactly sure what transpired since then. Mike tried to blame the reservation mix-up on me. I've never been the one in charge of the reservations. It's not fair. This is a big night. I cannot tell you how big this night is. And you've got to know what's coming in. That's your job. It's not solely my fault. And I don't think that it's right to put blame on any one person. Can we get on? Yes. And work as a team? Yes. God. After Gordon's pep talk, Lynn, Kim, and Lisa all stepped in to help get everyone seated. Totally different menu. What would you like? Seared tuna. Seared tuna. And uh, salmon. OK. With the dining room now completely full for the first time in years, the pressure was turned up on the mixing bowl staff. Mike, you had table five? I'm not even there, Liz. You were behind. Lynn, are you telling him to bring a bus pan? Well, let me take that for you, please. Thank you, Ashley. Can you wake up? Yes. Wake up. This is our one shot to make our lasting impression. We're going to blow it. How, how long are the appetizers on table five? Right, you can't drive me crazy yeah. right now. Honestly, I think Mike's job's not that hard. He just gets sidetracked and 
stops, stops being a manager. While each waiter is covering three to four tables, All right, so let me go ask Chicken Mike is looking after his friends. All right. Can I get the three soup? I need soup, soup bowls. I, I order now. Yeah, it's coming now, you fucking hell. Watch your back, watch your back. I was definitely concerned that Mike was going to crumble. He's not used to running a fucking busy dining room out there, you know that? Yeah. My God. Where's Mike? Oh! Oh, my God. Fucking hell. It's two hours into dinner service, and the mixing bowl has weathered the first storm. But they are about to be faced with another challenge, the New York Dragons. Hi, how are you? You gonna have a nice dinner? Sure, I hope so. Okay, so we're just gonna get your tables together, okay? All right, we'll be right with you. Are you gonna get that? Wait a minute, I thought that that table was gonna be with them. Can I see this? You forgot the biggest thing to put on the list, the Dragon's Reservation. The Dragons were supposed to be on that list, and somehow Mike just forgot. How is that missed? We how is that they overlooked? Just, someone, the Dragons just keep, Mike, well, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not exactly sure what transpired. It's beyond upsetting. There was no Dragons on there. My god, that table for me is the most important table. That's embarrassing. You're overlooking extremely important things. I was not told about the dragons. I found no, out. Like, seven why do you keep morning. saying that? Because I wasn't. I wasn't told. Was Excuse problem. me. Do not talk oh, to me God. like that. I was told seven o'clock this morning. That's it. Seriously, I'm pissed off. Dragons on the paper. I'm pissed off. Not my fault. Dragons, right over here. I put them on at seven o'clock. Can we please that's move that's on? That's it. Not my fault. It's relaunch night for the mixing bowl, and Mike's reservation mishap with the New York Dragons has caused him to go over the edge. I wasn't told. Do not talk oh, to me like know. that. Pissed off. That's it. I was told 7 o'clock this morning. Not my fault. Dragons on the paper. I mean, Can we that please that move on? That's it. We were all in shock and speechless. I've seen him blow up before, but that was a new, there's a new level right there. Hey, yes, can you fuck off outside now? Jesus Christ. This is like the Twilight Zone. I really think something in his brain has snapped. He's a freaking lunatic. Mike was raising his voice. I mean, I don't want him talking to my wife that way. I don't go for that. Mike's conduct has everyone rattled, and Gordon has some concerns for the restaurant owners. OK. Let me just tell you something, and I've got to be brutally honest. You've got one problem here. Mike. I don't know why Bill and Lisa were talking to Gordon. I don't know what they possibly could have said about me. You need a manager, and that is not your man. Business is business. If something's got to be done to change in this place, we got to change it. That's the restaurant business. Freaking fire him. If I would go home right now, life goes on. I'd get another job. But my life would be different. Mm. I just got to reevaluate the situation. Mm. Mike's gonna have to change, like the place has changed. So everybody else in the place is gonna get a second chance. So Mike should get a second chance and we're gonna move forward together. For now, Billy has decided to keep Mike on as manager. Move on, yeah? That was embarrassing, yeah? Can we put an end to this? I feel like I'm reborn again and we are gonna build the best damn restaurant that, that, ever existed, or at least in a 25-mile radius. <laughs> All right, table two's getting up. We're going to push it together for a table of four. Mike managed to find a place to seat the dragons, and it looks like Gordon has finally gotten through to him. 
Ready? Set. Okay. Hi. No. <laughs> I have a new look. New look, new restaurant, new me. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. I'm going to get you dinner out real quick, all right? Good job. Good job. For the first time, he said thank you to me. So that was like, wow. All of a sudden. <laughs> You know, like, was that him? Yeah, it was great. The service has been excellent. I give it great. I give the service a Although the Mixing Bowl's relaunch had some growing pains, it's clear the restaurant is headed in the right direction. As the week progressed, Mike's management skills kept improving. One and two is crucial that we get out of here. It's really good. The customers raved about the vibrant food. I love the new menu. It's so different. It, it feels great, right? So we got some amazing feedback from the food, Billy. Everybody's really loving the food. Holy moly. The profits were soaring. What each person spends on average went up by, like, double. In the spirit of the new healthy menu, Gordon sponsored the first ever Mixing Bowl Mile Run. Come on, Mike! Come on, Mike! An eight-year-old is beating you! And with the restaurant thriving, Billy even found some time to hang out with his new friends, the Dragons. Good job, man. This journey was unbelievable. I'm excited to go forward. That's what I want to see, that passion, yes? Yep. Yeah. Huh? And on Gordon's last day, he even got shy Billy to finally come out of the kitchen. I want you to stop what you're doing for two minutes and go say hello to your customers. I'm so proud of him. Couldn't be more proud of him. I want him to get a little recognition for all that he does. Thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah, thank you. The difference tonight from when I first arrived was extraordinary. I would seriously eat here. You're talented, big boy. You've got to make that transition from a chef to a restaurateur. I got the message on how I have to change to make this place the best it could be. Start thinking of cooking up there, not with your back. Yes, go on with that. Thank yes. you so much. Ladies the black first. cloud has definitely been lifted off this restaurant. We can't blame anyone but ourselves now because there's no excuses left. Ladies first. Oh, front <laughs> way. Oh. Oh. oh, no. Oh. It all came together, and I just can't wait to go forward. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Two months have gone by, and the restaurant is continuing to prosper. Gordon, he just let everything out on me. It was like rip on Mike week, but he definitely did teach me some things. We had fun with it. As for Billy and Lisa, their marriage is as strong as the restaurant itself. The changes I've seen in our relationship is amazing. So for that, Gordon, I thank you. That means so much to me. Next time on Kitchen Nightmares, one of Long Island, New York's oldest restaurants has become a local disaster. It's in a dumpster now. The mother and son owners are at each other's throats. Shake charge. I don't do this shit, Tell him to get out of here. The head chef is arrogant. I've been doing this 38 years. The sous chef doesn't care. Whatever. And the kitchen is the dirtiest Gordon has ever seen. You didn't see that. Can Gordon return the seascape to its former glory? Nothing's been choked in here this evening. We're going down now. Next time on Kitchen Nightmares.